And to help us uh, build up to the French Open, I'm delighted to be joined today by Roland Garros royalty, three-time French Open champion and former world number one, Arancha Sanchez Vicario, who's in India as an ambassador for the annual TCS 10K run in Bengaluru. Uh, Arancha, before I talk about the tennis, and we do have a fascinating French Open to build up to, what made a former tennis player like yourself want to get associated with a road race? Well, first of all, I think that, the, you know, because I'm an athlete, obviously, you know, any uh, competition to be an athlete, you know what it's like to get prepared for some uh, big event. You know, uh, I was doing it in tennis and um, I guess the athletes, I know how they feel because I prepare really well for this, you know, 10K, you know, marathon. And uh, obviously it's different than my situation, you know, my sport, but uh, I willing to have to prepare well, obviously, physically, you know, to be able to maintain all the tough matches that I play, you know, and to be able to be in the good condition that I was to to play so many matches during the whole year and be in best condition, play, you know, changing surface and everything. And I think that a schedule was very important in preparation before the tournaments as well to get in the tournaments play. So I know how the athletes feel and I'm very proud that they thought about me because I think we have a lot of very similarities. I can give good advice to them, you know, on the terms that uh, I think that they are, I know that we're in prepare, but uh, to wish them all the best. And obviously, you know, the values for the sport that in my sport help me can help them as well here and, and you know wait for them you know and the, be there how they you know how it's gonna be the race and how it's gonna be the start and, and obviously be at the end you know uh, to see who's gonna be the winner but uh, fortunately is that you know is that an experience for me but I was very happy that they thought about me as ambassador for this event. Yeah, Rancho, the participants certainly did uh, sweat it out on Sunday as with all the top tennis players in the world uh, at Roland Garros this weekend they call the French Open the hardest Grand Slam to win uh, for some of our more casual viewers. Can you explain why that is? Well, I think that obviously every Grand Slam has the difficulties, but uh, the French Open obviously is because physically you have to be, you know, um, much more, you know, like ready for playing, you know, to slide. The, you know, the mobility is completely different than other surface. The, you have to be very patient because the, the points are much longer. Uh, you need to, you know, you have more time to prepare to do anything on, on your shots. Mentally, you have to be ready because uh, it's a very, you know, like uh, physical, you know, uh, when you go there, Grand Slam, it's a last two weeks period. So uh, mentally as well. And if you go through that and you try to win and you win the French Open, then you are ready for anything. I think that uh, as Spaniards, we grew up playing on clay, so we know what it's like. We were prepared physically and mentally, and we always give our best, so we were tougher to beat. I think I was a player that I never give up on the court. I really, you know, fight every ball. I uh, even, you know, from the beginning until the end, so the matches can go long. And you mentally think that uh, in other surface the point will be over, but there, no, you have time to recover and maybe still on the point, right? So that really makes it more difficult. I think mentally you have to be even more stronger than the other Grand Slams as well. Uh, we'd like to uh, go through the contenders uh, in a little bit of detail as this conversation progresses, Arantxa. But the women first and each of the last five editions of the French Open has produced a different winner of the Suzanne uh, Longland Trophy. Do you see that trend continuing this year as well? I have to admit, as you said, you know, it's a different winner every year, you know, every five of the last five years. Even at the beginning, you know, in the tournaments in the WTA, it's been 18 different winners from uh, every different tournament they play, except Kitova, who won two, you know, two tournaments this year. So it makes it very open because uh, the number one also rank is very open, you know, it's very close. And who will be the player who will be more consistent will be the one who will be ending number one at the end of the year. You know, there's still a lot of possibilities going there. Their favorite players who are coming, you know, that they can win there, but there is also young players that are coming behind. So as we just said, it's hard to pick only one this year on the women's size. There is a bit of a common trend uh, through those last five years, that graphic that we just had on the screens, and that is Simona Halep, who has reached uh, three finals. Uh, Arancha, does that make her a favourite uh, again, given how she seems to be there or thereabouts pretty much every year? Well, I think she's still always the favourite because, you know, fits really well her game. Yeah. But the expectations, I think she couldn't handle that well, you know, that pressure. And it feel at the end reflect a little bit, you know, especially on the, on the game that she was playing. So as long as, the, you know, then she's managed to, to deal with that, you know, and, and, and she can put it all together with her game, then obviously it makes her more dangerous. And um, I just think that it depends more on her than anything else, you know, mentally, how she's going to handle that. Yeah. And don't put any pressure because in a long, you know, two to two, two weeks period, 
a lot of things is, you know, can happen. It's very important, the first matches, I think that the toughest one, when you go through, I think you know, everybody is starting to get better and the seasons are becoming you know, harder to beat. But as you say, the first match is a lot of pressure, expectations, and I just think you have to go one at a time. And Hallett maybe yeah, has more chances, but there are other ones as well. We have to mention uh, Serena Williams as well. She reached uh, two Grand Slam finals last year in, of course, her first season back after giving birth. But she struggled uh, with her fitness so far this season. Is the French Open, uh, you think, going to be the hardest title for her to win again? I think the most difficult for her at this moment is not to get injured because if the injuries are not, you know, they're not with her, yeah. then she can still a favor because she's, you know, still the, you know, champion. She's still a winner. She won 23 Grand Slams and, and, you know, she has still have the passion. She wants to win more and she's still the favor, whatever happens, right? But if she's injured and she cannot play so consistently, it's very hard for the body, you know, to continue like that. But uh, as long as she's there, for me, I have to count on her, you know, the first match is maybe is the most difficult, yeah. but when he goes through that, you have to still count on her. Okay, let's look at the men now, Rancha, Roger Federer joins uh, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in the draw for the first time in four years. Usually, uh, it's a no-brainer picking uh, Nadal as the overwhelming favourite for the title, uh, but this year he hasn't been as dominant as he has in recent years. How do you see the men's competition from a bird's eye view? Obviously, Rafa has always been the favor and still the favor because uh, you know he's always been the favor and uh, who was winning most, you know, all the tournaments mostly on clay, right? But now it's uh, more, you know, it's changing because uh, he didn't win any tournament before previous coming to this year, you know, French Open yet. So it's uh, interesting to see that maybe it's a little more, you know, maybe other players, maybe Djokovic also there has a lot of chances this year. The young players like Tim and Sisi Paz who are doing really well, very specialized on clay, but still I think the favor is Rafa anyway, whatever's happened. The comeback from Federer is also, you know, big news because he's coming back to play on clay. Yeah. But in five sets, you know, it's even more tougher, I think, you know, mentally, physically that, uh, than any other Grand Slam. And uh, as I say, Rafa for me is still the favorite to win. And Novak Djokovic is, of course, uh, bidding to hold all four Grand Slam titles together for the second time in his career. He's had a, a, a bit of a slump after the Australian Open, didn't he? But with that title in Madrid, he too looks uh, ruthless once again. I think you always have to count on him, yes. But um, always, as I say, the first match is going to be the toughest one. Yeah. Definitely, I think Rafa has more pressure because he's still, you know, he's still the favorite to win and, and, and the favorite for everyone. But at the same time, Djokovic is coming back, you know, playing really well now and get the confidence. So, and um, once he's on the top of the game, then he's going to become more dangerous. So, yeah, you have to count on him. And a lot of things can happen in five sets, but the first, you know, matches, as I say, will say much more about the, the situation. But definitely, you can have to put them with the names I say before, yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Dominic Thiem uh, and Stefano Tsitsipas uh, earlier. Thiem, of course, was a finalist last year and ran uh, Rafa Nadal quite close. Uh, he's beaten Federer and Nadal already this season as well. Do you get the feeling that he is perhaps the closest of this next generation of players to perhaps make a breakthrough at a Grand Slam? Definitely, I think that he's showing that, you know, he's uh, make a big step because before, you know, he was not winning that those kind of big events or, or beating the top players, you know. Now she, he's doing it, same as, uh, you know, Tsitsipas, that's, that he's, they're beating, you know, Rafa, they're beating, you know, Federer, they're beating. Yes. So they're starting to be, you know, coming up there. Uh, I think that it's nice to see, you know, the, the old four were there and now, you know, um, the young, the green ones, how they call it, to come in. Yeah. So it's changing, that's what is going to happen. And... Um, it makes more interesting for, for the game and definitely, I mean, uh, it's a long way and to, to catch those champions, but in the future, I think those names will be there for a long time, yes. Okay, one final question, uh, Arantxa. There are a couple of very interesting floaters uh, in the men's draw. Stan Wawrinka, who's of course a former champion, but not quite showing uh, the same consistency as he was before the twin knee operations. And Alexander Zverev, again, immensely talented but uh, has struggled to get going this season. I'm cu curious to know where you think uh, uh, these two players are in their careers right now. Well, they are top, le top players and they, I think they, they are, you have to count on them as well. The only thing is that probably, you know, Babrinka, it was hard when you're coming back for so long for that injury that he had, you know, and to recover that after you don't play for a long time, you don't get seated and then you have to play tough matches maybe since the beginning when you are used to, to play, you know, 
maybe them, you know, later, right? So I think uh, Babrinka is coming back. Is a still a, he's still a dangerous, you know, uh, player. You know, uh, the favor, you know, probably from the crowd because he, you know, is a yeah. Swiss, but French, whatever. So he's going to be having a lot of support. So it's going to be dangerous. I think that uh, uh, probably, you know, he can do uh, big, you know, in, in, in Roland Garros. And it's very, probably a surprise because uh, he started, you know, really well, you know, like, you know, last year and then, you know, beginning of the year. But then uh, now he's been struggling a little bit. I think, as he said, he had some personal, you know, issues that maybe didn't let him play as well. I just think he has to put that away, try to get him again, you know, the confidence in the game and try to, you know, uh, play, you know, more matches and win more matches. And when you win more matches, then the, the game will come back. And I definitely, those two players are contenders, you know, maybe on the not as much, but they're dangerous. I have to admit that they're very dangerous. All right. Uh, on that note, uh, Arantxa Sanchez, thank you so much for helping us build up uh, to what promises to be a fascinating Grand Slam. It has been my pleasure. You're welcome. You're welcome.